Welcome to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. We're here at Dylan. Hey, we're here with Emily, Glenn, and Camilla. Now, Emily, who's Camilla? Camilla is SDO's BFF. You want to find out more about how they became best friends? Friend little SDO on Facebook. And SDO is a very cool satellite called the Solar Dynamic Observatory, and Glenn and Emily are giving us a sneak peek. You, you didn't talk about how Camilla's a range free chicken. <laughs> Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is a spacecraft that's actually going to go in orbit around the Earth, look at the sun 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and beam down all sorts of pretty pictures of the sun. So Glenn, from what I understand is uh, SDO is part of the Living with the Star program, which is going to be a series of satellites studying the sun. Yeah, we've got several satellites that are going to be looking directly at the sun, as well as looking at the magnetosphere of the Earth. This one actually has a dedicated ground system. We have two antennas that are dedicated in the desert southwest that are just designed to absorb the data from this uh, mission here. Um, and it's going to be dedicated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pulling down all that data through the uh, dedicated antennas. We're going to combine this with data from SOHO and ACE and try to get a better understanding of the charged particles coming from the sun, the UV, the x-rays. Um, we're right now in a period of time where there's not a whole lot of sunspot activity. In fact, we've gone almost 100 days without any significant sunspots, and that's the last time that happened was before the 50s. We're hoping to try to understand as the sunspot activity increases over the next 7 to 10 years, how that affects the way that the sun actually does you know, its thing and how it dissipates energy to the, uh, to the Earth. Now, uh, there's, so there's three instruments on board, and what are they? Uh, we've got uh, HMI, AIA, and EVE. Each one of them looks at a different part of the sun, different wavelength of the sun, different depth of the sun. Uh, one of them even looks at the ripples on the sun to see uh, the magnetic uh, characteristics of the sun. So what you're saying is for the first time ever we might be able to actually take an ultrasound of the sun? Yeah, yeah. We're actually going to be able to look at the ripples that are coming off of the sun and give you a feel for what's going on on the far side and see how the waves, those acoustic waves, actually travel around the sun and maybe get some insight from those and how, what's going on deeper inside the sun. SVO is going on, what, a five-year mission to boldly go where another solar dynamic observatory has ever been before. What does that mission entail? Well, the mission has three instruments. That's basically, they're looking at the sun and trying to get much more detailed images to be able to tell us the whole story of the sun, or at least give us much more detail about how it's working, how it's changing over time, but in a way that we've never done before. For the average person, what does that mean? I mean, why do I need to know? I know why I need to know more about the sun being a media knot. Well, you want to know how it's changing, how it's working, how it's affecting us here on Earth as well. You know, as we, you know, Twitter, as we use Facebook, as we use our computers, our cell phones, everything yes. that's, you know, GPS, you want to know how to get from point A to point B, you want the satellites to know where your location is. And all of the technology we are dependent on is affected by what happens on the sun. Now you bring up a very good point. Uh, that would be magnetosphere. <laughs> so as things happen on the sun and cause interference on, on Earth, uh, we need to be prepared how to handle that. Well, the way I describe it is, you know, up until now we've had instruments that were taking images every 10 minutes. And this one's going to be taking them much faster. So, you know, if you've got a bunch of people in a room dancing away, the light goes on every 10 minutes. You're trying to figure out what dance they're doing. Every 10 minutes, can't tell. But if you're switching the light every 10 seconds, suddenly you're like, ooh, the Macarena. Yeah, and not to mention the safety factor. Now, one of the cool things I read up about SDO is that for the first time, the pictures that we're going to be seeing is going to be better than HD, yeah. almost IMAX quality. Yeah, we're going to actually be 10 times greater than high definition. Uh, we're going to be bringing those pictures down every two seconds. We're going to get full discs of the sun and many, many wavelengths, and we're going to be able to put those together to, one, make really good movies, but also see on a fine scale what actually is going on near sunspots and in the areas where there aren't any sunspots. So we've got a lot of activity that we're going to be able to watch with this. Since it's going to be greater than HD, you guys are going to be sending down about one and a half terabytes data per day. Yeah. And you're talking about a five year plus mission. I mean, where are you going to store all that data? We, this spacecraft has no capability to actually record the science data on board. It is just going to bring the data in, take the pictures, send the data right down through those antennas that are right there, uh, down to the ground. And they're actually going to be recorded on the ground with raids and raids and raids of hard drives in New Mexico. People will be able to download this data uh, hopefully minutes after it comes down in the thumbnail form. Uh, and then the data will be uh, processed so, so that it makes a little bit more sense and is more distributable. Uh, you talk about uh, this uh, life with a star. Living with a star. Living with a star. So how is that categorically different than, say, my so-called life with a star, or dancing with a star, or how to win a date with a star? How is that different? Well, this one you can't touch. If you get too close, it's not. I, I think that's true in the other ready. case too. There's well, legal I don't know. action. To dancing, take you know, <laughs> dancing. There's always the dip. This one you do the dip. You're not coming back from the dip. This idea is that it's our closest star. It's an average star compared to every other star. It's. Well, that's a little insensitive. It's an average star. It's above 
above-average star. It's a it's a very uh, uh, idealistic star, a very happy star. You know, I wouldn't no, marginalize it like yeah, that. Yeah, no, it really contents itself with you know being average. So we're in an average solar yeah, system. Yeah. But you know what that's like, right? <laughs> this is the first spacecraft that actually has uh, carbon uh, graphite uh, antennas on it. Um, they're going to be exposed to the sun 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's also one of the first NASA missions that's running with the lithium ion batteries, the ones that most people are familiar with in their laptops right. that make the laptops lighter than they were back when it was nickel cadmium. We've got about uh, 800 of those inside of here to power it. Uh, although it is a sun mission, we will be going to eclipse occasionally, so we will have to rely on that battery to survive uh, up to 72 minutes and normally around 22 minute eclipses uh, twice a year. And, and the way that the sun interacts with the magnetosphere and, and the way that the charged particles come in, we don't really understand a whole lot of that. Uh, this, along with the MMS mission, which is being built here at Goddard, um, we'll also be looking at how the charged particles from the sun interact with the tail and some what we call disconnect events that happen in the magnetosphere around the Earth. So all that data with being able to find out what's going on on the sun two or three days earlier will really give us a better understanding of the entire system. The basic idea is we've been building models through the information we've gotten from past satellites. And SDO is going to give us the data to prove that those models are right. And as we perfect the models over time and with new satellites, we'll be able to better understand what's happening and be able to make predictions and find the validity or, you know, are those predictions actually accurate? Kind of like when you're doing weather. You know, for a long time we tried to predict it was going to be a rainy day and most of us, when the weather guy said, oh, it's going to rain, you're like, you know, it's not going to rain. We all know that, you know, not going to happen today. So trying to make these predictions better so that, you know, when we have to reroute airlines and we have to shut down spacecrafts, you're not just doing it on a whim. You want to know that when someone tells you there is going to be a storm, that there is going to be a storm, that you yeah. can predict, you can, you know, react accordingly. Now, is that predictability, is this kind of information just going to give us more clarity or, or more long-term predictability? It's probably both over time. The idea being at first we need to just, you know, be able to predict on a day-to-day -day basis what's going to happen. As we get much better at prediction, we'd be able to predict long-term. The long-term prediction is what we want, but we can't do that until we get the details right. So right. if we get the details, we'll be able to do long-term prediction. And as I understand, we're getting 1.5 terabytes a day of detail with SVO. Yeah, it's about half a million songs downloaded from iTunes every day. Well, you can't ask for more than that from little SVO. <laughs> Well, Glenn, thank you very much for uh, giving us a uh, sneak peek of uh, SDO. Oh, well, thanks for coming out. And, and uh, good luck with the launch later this year, and we'll be looking uh, forward to the data. Awesome. You're watching NASA Edge, an inside and outside look at all things NASA, even with Camille. Camilla. 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 <laughs>